makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, invite you to enjoy life, life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good, it's refreshing, and the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mama Mia, I'm afraid of something as terrible as it's going to happen to me soon. Because this morning I'm going to get the worst letter I've ever got since I'm in America. Is a letter from Immigration Service, and they write, they send a man down to see me. Mamma mia, maybe this man is going to look at me and say, Basco's here three years, he still don't look like an American, and send him back. <laughs> <laughs> and all the morning, I'm, I'm going crazy trying to figure out why the immigration man is coming. First time I figured, maybe they're angry because of some stupid thing i am done in my first year in America. Because once... I saw a poor fella stuck in the middle of the street. All the cars was running at him and it looked like he was going to be killed. So I rushed out and I'm a push him back on the sidewalk. How am I supposed to know he was a traffic cop? <laughs> 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 and I'm a never forget when I went to mail my first letter in the little box in the corner. All of a sudden the whole street is full of cops, the trucks, the people are yelling and screaming. I didn't know, but... I was uh, trying to put my letter into the fire alarm box. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mama Mia, I made lots of stupid mistakes in my first year in America. And, and I'm afraid this immigration, the fellas are going to bring me very bad news. And if that ain't the bad enough, here comes some more bad news. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi, hello, hello. Oh, Pasquale, I'm, I'm in a terrible trouble. They're coming to see me four o'clock and... I'm afraid I'm all finished in America unless you talk to them tomorrow before they come for me today. I mean, today for it tomorrow. It's, it's... All right. Uh, now give me the Italian the translation. <laughs> That's funny. I was done. Look, look. The way you crippling the kings is English. Even the Blue Cross a Hospital plan I can't help you. <laughs> um, but sorry, please. Uh, read this letter, please. What? Well, let me see. Uh, 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 oh, it's bad. Uh, uh, it's terrible. Huh? Pasquale, what, what, what are you thinking? Luigi, Columbus found America, is that right? Well, it sure is. Looks like you're going to lose it again. <laughs> no, Pasquale, Pasquale, what are they going to do to me? And why? What, well, wait, what wait, am I doing? Take easy, calm down, relapse. <laughs> All the thing is, it's just as plain as to me as that a banana nose on your face. <laughs> yeah, but what, what, Pasquale? Tell me, what? It's simple, Luigi. I'm going to tell you. Immigration department wants to find out how rich you got since you come to America. Uh, how much your money you get off the boat with? Nothing. And uh, how much you got in your pocket now? Nothing. That's too bad. Yeah, but Pasquale, you know money don't mean nothing to me. Luigi, people who ain't got it never know the meaning of it. I got it, and all I can say is... Pasquale, <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, I'm got a little money in the bank, but why should immigration a man care how much I'm got as long as I'm don't bother nobody? Luigi, you ever hear of something called American Standard of Living? Sure. Well, with you, the Standard of Living don't stand. It lays down. <laughs> Now, Pasquale, please, it's not a joke because I'm, I'm in a terrible trouble. Who's the joker? I'm just trying to break you the bad news, easy as I can. Bad news? Luigi, the awful truth is that you've been living in America three years now, eating American food, wearing American clothes, breathing American air, 
But when it comes to making American dollars, you back to Luigi the Green Oh, <laughs> Pascal, you, mean, you mean this inspectors are coming to ask me how much money I'm going to get? Not the money, Luigi. No, things. You know, Americans have got the highest standard of living in the world. And when the inspector comes in here, takes one look at all this old broken down furniture you got, right away he marks you A-W-O-L. <laughs> A-W-O-L? What's that? Alien without loot. Yo, <laughs> Luigi, sure, I can just see that immigration of fella comes in, he says, Bosco, we got the highest standard of living here. Every kitchen has got a refrigerator, washing machine, a garbage at disposal. Where's your electric toaster, Mr. Bosco? My, my electric toaster? Yeah, I could just hear you crying to him. Please, Mr. Inspector, I don't believe in electric. I always toast to my bread between two candles. <laughs> <laughs> and I got hardly enough to eat, so I got no garbage to disposal. No, no, but sorry, this, this can't be. He, he's not going to ask you. Luigi, the Americans are very proud of their high standard of living. And they don't mind taking immigrants into their melted pot, but you got to melt with the rest of the pot. <laughs> but, but, sorry, I, I'm a try them. I'm going to go to night school. I'm, I'm going to try to learn. Luigi, just look out of your room. Three years in America, what do you got to show? Two used up library cards, read a feather in the window for the community chest, and the statues of Lincoln, Washington, and Jefferson that's older than they are. Yeah, but, 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 look, look at the leaky old icebox you got in the kitchen. Tell the fella how you forgot to empty out the pan one night. The next morning you woke up a swimming. But, but, I'm, I'm in a terrible trouble. Ain't, ain't there, is, there is no way out for me? What? There's the one way out, the little cabbage foot. The one way? With my help, immigration a fella could walk in at 4 p.m. tomorrow and find you with electric stove, electric refrigerator, toaster, coffee maker, electric everything. How? <laughs> Marry my daughter Rosa. <laughs> Mamma mia, that's to the electric chair. <laughs> Don't be so funny. You know what that inspector's going to say when he walks into your electric kitchen and sees your wife or Rosa making your breakfast with all those electric things? Yeah, he's going to say, this fellow was a better off for taking the gas. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to my night school Luigi, now. wait. You better listen to me. I'm the only one who can give you that high standard of living. You mean that's a heavy standard of a living a Dubai. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it, Luigi. It's probably just a routine checkup. No, Luigi, I, I happen to know the true fact. The immigration service never comes to you unless you, you do something real bad. Well, there he goes, Smiley Olden. <laughs> Stop worrying so much, Luigi. Maybe they are coming to you, well, because you won an award or something. No, sure, I'm, I'm going to win nothing. Well, then, maybe you, you got the money coming to you, some refund, huh? No, I'm, I'm going to never give the money. Well, then, maybe... No. Not. Stop, Luigi, you are fighting your own liar. Quiet, <laughs> fellas, Miss Foley. Good evening, class. Good, Good evening, Miss Foley. Foley. We're a little late, so I won't bother calling a roll today. Oh, good. And if the questions are a little hard today, consider that I am playing hooky. Fine, Miss Pauline, that was very cute. Let's get on with the lesson. Mr. Basso, you have your hand raised? Hi, Miss Pauline, what's a high standard of a living? Is that in our lesson today? No, but it's got to be in my store tomorrow. <laughs> what? Immigration officer, Miss Pauline, I mean the inspector, he's a coming... Four o'clock tomorrow to see if I'm got a high standard of a living. And if Pasquale says I'm got to have electric everything or else, I'm going to melt in the pot. <laughs> oh, Luigi, are you for shimmers? <laughs> you know, you wouldn't be happy unless you can meet that inspector wrapped in an electric blanket with an aerial sticking out of your head. <laughs> Mr. Basco, I think you're worrying needlessly about a high standard of living. They're probably coming to make a routine checkup. No, that they, they, they never do, Miss Paul. Unless the alien does something that makes him deport. The boy. But I'm never did nothing like that. But that's right, but this little Wiener Schnitzel takes Boy Scouts across the street. <laughs> ah, my Luigi. Like we say in the delicatessen business, life is a giant salami. And we got to live it one slice at a time. <laughs> 
I should say, please, please, no joke, huh? Because I'm a gotta get some money to buy this standard of living, and and I'm a gotta get it to buy tomorrow. Yo, I, I, I wish I could help you, Luigi, but uh, next week my life insurance money is due. <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> and don't look at me, Luigi. If I miss one more payment on my television set, Gene Autry never rides again. <laughs> Uh, look, Mr. Basco, if you're so determined to get such merchandise, you can get them on credit. There is your answer, Luigi. That's right, the installment plan. The install, installment plan? And what's that? Installment, well, Luigi, uh, that if you can't pay in one payment, you see, they break it up, and then you can't pay in 20 payments. <laughs> Stop that, Mr. Schultz. Oh, well, don't worry, Mr. Basco. After class, you can go to one of the department stores open Tuesday evening and buy on credit. Oh, thank you, Miss Fudding. I suggest what I'm going to do. And then when immigration managers see me, I'm going to say, don't you worry about the me. I'm a credit to America. Yes, sir. Are you interested in that refrigerator? Ah, it's beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> we have one that holds six cubic feet, another holds eight, and this one holds ten cubic feet. Please, I'm looking for a refrigerator that holds the food and not the feet. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a live one tonight. <laughs> Please, Mr. Salzman, how much am I going to pay for this, uh, this, this big one here? Uh, Five hundred. Dollars, huh? Yes, yes. And that's going to include the little electric bulb that's inside, huh? <laughs> yes, we're throwing that in today. All right. Here, let me show you. All right, sir. Now, look at the size of these ice cube trays. They'll hold all the ice you'll ever need. Oh, that's a good. I'm going to tell my ice man he should have filled them up every day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Sir, you fill the trays with water, and within ten minutes, they turn into ice. Oh, they... Oh, but that don't sound so good. If this refrigerator works with electric, why you need the ice to keep it inside the cold? Sir, are you interested in this refrigerator? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a sure high standard of living, huh? What? I mean, if you were to work in my house, and, and you were to see this refrigerator, you would think I'm rich, huh? Sir, you couldn't own a better box if you were one of the 400. Ah, 400 watts. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Well, sir, what do you say? We have just a few left, and after that, the price goes up. Well, all right, I'm going to take it. Good, good. And, a, and a please, wrap up for the little bit about the step with us. Shouldn't have break it. You have my solemn promise. Now, will there be anything else? Oh, sure, I'm, I'm an electric stove, an electric toaster, an electric coffee maker. Wonderful. One, well, before you go, don't forget to look at our dishwasher. Uh, why, he's a nice fellow. <laughs> I'll never learn. Sir, I suggest we take those items one at a time. Now, are you going to pay cash for this refrigerator? Oh, no, it's just... Uh, that is good. Good, good. Uh, good, it's a wonderful. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We can arrange the terms to suit your pocket. Now, how much are you ready to put down in cash? Well, uh, 20 cents. <laughs> <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> you know, please, I'm, I'm like to put nothing down and just to pay out because I'm going to need the 20 cents to put a car Oh, well, have a seat at my desk, will you? Thank you. Good. Good. Now then, let's fill out this credit card. The name and address? Uh, Luigi Basca, 21 North Holster Street. Uh-huh. Who do you work for? I'm my own boss. Oh, I see. Business? Terribly. <laughs> what business are you in, sir? Oh, antique. Uh-huh. And what do you earn per week? Oh, well... Uh, are you worried if I'm going to have enough food to put in the fridge right there? <laughs> now that you mention it, yes. <laughs> Mr. Basco, how much money do you earn per week? Well, uh, that uh, depends. What the week are you talking about? <laughs> well, let's just take a gamble and take last week, shall we? You picked a bad week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
that the week I'm almost to starve to death. <laughs> now, but do you have a bank account? Oh, sure. Well, how much are you worth? You mean, uh, what, a 20 cents I'm going to get in a pocket? Uh? Yes, throw it in. How much are you worth? Dollar 20 cents. <laughs> Basco, I'm afraid your credit is not quite good enough. Are you afraid? But what? Why not? Well, because you've got to have some money in the bank. Yeah, but if I'm got money in the bank, why I'm gonna need your credit? This one's not only alive; he's fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Please help me, Mister, because I'm gonna get a high standard by tomorrow four o'clock. I'm sorry, Mister Basco. Really. But please tell me, tell me what I should do to get the refrigerator. Well, since you have no credit, you must buy for cash. But I'm got to no cash. Then get it. Where? In a bank. And they're gonna lend me the cash? If you have credit. And how I'm gonna get this credit? By getting some cash. And if I'm a can't to get to the cash, then you must buy on credit. Goodbye, Mister Basco. Goodbye, Mr. Credit. <laughs> and for me, it's a goodbye, America. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that you'll find helpful on your job or when you're working around your home. When your work gets a little tiresome and you need a little boost, chew a refreshing stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. You see, having something good in your mouth to chew on sort of gives you a lift and helps keep you feeling satisfied. Then, too, the lively flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint freshens your mouth and helps keep your throat moist. So you just naturally feel better and you tackle your work with more enthusiasm. Try it and see for yourself. Enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint Gum while you work. See how the smooth, good chewing helps make your work go smoother and easier. That's Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, I'm almost the one crazy this morning. I'm gonna want the immigration man to send me back to Italy, so I'm running around to the pony shops, the loan companies to get a cash. But it was no use. Loan companies don't give a cash without a security. Pony shops want a security for the cash, and I'm stuck in between. No security and no cash. Well, I'm gonna decide after all, I'm in America, I'm not gonna do anything. So I'm running right down to the immigration department to stop the man. Mamma mia, what for a big immigration building. I'm I think more people work here than is coming to America. Can I help you? Oh, yes, please. Please, Miss Lady, help me stay in America. Hmm? Just what is your problem? I'm not the got the high enough standard of living. Oh, well, there's nothing I can do about that. Mamma mia, I can see nothing is gonna help me here. I'm going to have to go up to the higher ups upstairs. Now, wait, you can't go in there. Oh, is it too late to stop now? Mr. Basco, for the tenth time, I am not in charge of your case, and I do not have the time to search through all the files for your record. But uh, please, uh, Mr. Prentice, before an inspector is coming to my house, uh, holler out to everybody that Luigi Basco has got a high standard of a living. Quiet, Mr. Basco. Will you please go home and wait for the inspector? You're only wasting your time. I don't know where I'm got to no places to go today. Please, Mr. Prentice, if you're too busy, maybe you're going to let me talk with your boss. That's impossible, Mr. Basco. Mr. Kennedy is the district director for the whole Chicago area, and he's too busy a man. Then maybe, maybe you just open up his door and yell in that the Basco's are getting his refrigerator next week, and he shouldn't worry. What? And I tell him if, he, if he's away to one or more once, I'm going to have a much, so much electric stuff in my kitchen, I'm going to blow all of the fuses. Mr. <laughs> Basco, will you please go home? Not till I talk with the boss. Mr. Kennedy cannot see you. Do you understand? He can't see you. What's the matter? He's a forget his eyeglasses. <laughs> Mr. Kennedy, I'm, 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 I didn't mean to start this so much trouble. Trouble? You've just about worn out my whole staff. Now, I suggest you go home and wait for the inspector, Mr. Basco. No, 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 please, Mr. Kennedy, don't send me back to Italy. 
Since I'm in America, I'm always acting like a good citizen. And I'm always obey all of the laws. And my black is the biggest sign of post no bills. Believe me, I'm never a post in my bills. I'm going to take them straight to down to the gas company. <laughs> what? And a box of the coffee drops that says, open this end. Honest, even if nobody is to watch me, I'm never once to try to open up at the other end. <laughs> and I'm going to watch everywhere how to be good American. All over, I'm going to read the big sign, don't neglect your 5,000 mile checkup. Mr. Kennedy, I'm a promise. As soon as I'm a finish of working on my first 5,000 miles in America, I'm a going in for that to check up. Really, Mr. Bass? And I'm even, I'm even a Mr. Prentice obeyed the radio. Once an answer, he says, send me 10 cereal box of taps. I'm a so sorry for him, I'm a send him the cereal too. <laughs> Please, Mr. Kennedy, don't, don't send me back to Italy. Mr. Basco, calm yourself and listen to me. I don't know what the charges are against you, but I strongly advise you to go home and wait for the inspector. But I'm afraid that... Please, look up on the record to see, see what I did wrong. Mr. Basco, will you do as I say? But if you don't want to help me, maybe you got a boss. Maybe you'd like President Truman's home telephone number. Oh, thank you. What's the number? Good day. <laughs> Well, you finally showed up for 4.20. I suppose one of the things you learned in America is a lateness. Well, this gentleman learned earliness. He's been waiting for you for the last 30 minutes. Hello, Mr. Basso. I'm Mr. Knox from the Immigration and Naturalization Service. Please, please, excuse me. I'm sorry I'm a lecher, but I If you had a wrist to watch, you would have come on time. I was just telling Mr. Knox I'm willing to improve your standard of living. As a matter of fact, Mr. Basco, I was looking around your antique shop and... Please, Mr. Knox, even though you don't see nothing, don't send me back to Italy. Believe me, I'm just as good Mr. as... Mr. Basso, the reason... Don't die, everybody! Here comes my refrigerator! Quick, let shoot, shoot! What's the lesson? I told you I had an idea before. You want to show the immigration people you got at a high standard of living? So I am giving it a lift! I should <laughs> listen! You don't bother to thank me. Just attach it before that nosy inspector gets here. Sure! Yeah? I got news for you. <laughs> huh? That's the nosy inspector. Yeah. <laughs> but the important thing is that we got... Who? Ha! What did you just say? That's a him shirt. Oh. Well, I was just passing by with my refrigerator, Luigi, and I thought I would drop in and have a bite with you. <laughs> <laughs> reason I came down I got it. I got it. I got it. I sneaked them out of the house. Look, Luigi, an electric toaster, no, a no. waffle maker, a coffee maker, no, even an electric knife sharpener. Well, that'll come in handy for cutting our throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, Luigi, you can't speak. I know just how you feel. Yeah, but it. listen. Who I... will we pull the wool over that inspector's eyes? Schultz, it was a marvelous idea you had to bring the stuff over for Luigi. You're a genius, Schultz. Schultz! Schultz, who is Schultz? <laughs> I know it, I know it, I know it, this is an inspector. How do you do? <laughs> I'm pleased to meet you. And I, I... I wish I was dead. <laughs> Just let me say that... Oh, let me see, look what I brought you. No, no, no. Oh, my wife's electric eye, you know. No, no, no. Oh, oh, I, I, I have to give Schultz credit for this whole wonderful idea. Schultz! Who is Schultz? <laughs> Somebody quick find Schultz before I get a heart attack. <laughs> I, I may be smart in school, but Schultz, you have a certain practical knack. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but you don't know us and us and... No, 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 no. What is the use? Let him talk, Luigi. No, let no, him no. talk. Are sure? Already I got one foot back in Austria. Austin, <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the inspector. Right, jump in your horse, sir. Jim, any kick, get you. Oh, oh, jump. Mr. Basco, this is all very entertaining, but will you please explain to me what's going on around here? Mr. Inspector, my friends, it was all a mess of good, but is everything my fault? They would bring all those things from their house, so so I should look like I'm got a high standard of living, and and then if I'm got a high standard of living, you you shouldn't have sent me back to Italy. Mr. Basco, my reason for coming here was to find out why you didn't register between January first and January tenth as you're supposed to. Register. You know, all aliens are required to register every year until they become citizens. Sure, and and this year I'm a forgotten. You better come down tomorrow morning and register, Mr. Basco, or. 
You may get into a lot of trouble. Oh, sure, sure, Mr. Inspector. And then everything is going to be all right. Huh? I, I mean, you're not going to depart to me, huh? Well, Mr. Basto, the reason we're so lenient about your failure to register is that we made a check on you first. We uh, talked to your bank, your neighbors, and the people you do business with. Oh. It's true, you don't have the best financial account, but you couldn't have a better character account. Thank you. Your desire and promptness in getting an education is something we want all immigrants to take advantage of. And uh, I noticed on this old icebox a library card that has been receiving quite some use. Oh, that's, uh, that's nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm like to read and learn. The friends you've made speak well of you. And your antique shop. The love you must have for this country couldn't be better shown. The uh, conception some people have of a high standard of living could use some change. And I think you could do it, Mr. Bass. Well, uh, I'd better go now. Good day. Good day. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Good day. Yeah, Mr. Specht, I want to talk with you. I'm going to go. Yeah. Yeah, well, now that everything has turned out so good. Uh, what, what do we do with all this stuff? Yeah. What are we going to do? What else? Plug in the toaster, plug in the waffle maker, plug in the coffee maker. Yeah, yeah. You're old and horror that you make some toast and waffles. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. I'm going to plug in the refrigerator and make some ice cubes for the wife. Yeah, and I should say, well, what am I going to do, huh? You, Luigi, you plug in the electric blanket and go to sleep. You have done enough for one day. <laughs> What looked like the worst day of my life was it turned out to be the best. And I'm just living for that big day when I'm going to register every year with the Americans. Mamma mia, my proudest day is going to come when I'm going to walk in at a voting booth. I'm going to close up with the shower curtains and I vote for everybody on the ballot. Oh. Alexander, <laughs> Jibasco, little immigrant. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you that it's a good idea to carry a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum with you wherever you go. Chew a stick when you want to freshen your taste or sweeten your breath. Chew a stick when you feel a little tense or jittery. The smooth, pleasant chewing will help you relax and feel more contented. You'll find times every day when Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum can help you feel better and get more enjoyment out of your work and other things you do. So make it a regular custom to carry a package of refreshing, delicious, Wrigley Spearmint Gum with you wherever you go. Just tuck it into your purse or pocket, and you're always set for some helpful, enjoyable chewing. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Mary Schiff as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. The music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. This is Charles Lyon. This is the CBS Radio Network.